Hey guys, it's Jager262 and welcome back to the channel. Today I have some real cool Black Series goodies that I was able to find at my local Walmart this week. And the reason I say that is I live in the American South and so this line has not been getting out to us at all down here in any way, shape or form. And I pre-ordered a bunch online, but nothing has been coming our way. And I know in some parts, some Western parts of the country and in Canada, these waves have been out for a while, but it's nice to finally get some and the reason i say that is you'll notice and i'll go through a lot of quirks on the incinerator trooper which i know i just did i think it was a couple days ago i did the hot toys review so got this little six inch half scale version of that one here but you'll see star wars the clone wars appear on the new ahsoka tano figures um the new 501st figures, some Mandalorian loyalists, all that stuff. And then on the Mandalorian side of things, you'll see Star Wars The Mandalorian. So this wave, initially, that this guy was a part of, they just had The Mandalorian on it. And they did a reprint of the packages. So this is an, like this is the first wave out to the public, is where he's from, and I just got mine. So I'm real interested, oops, sorry, real interested to see how he looks. Also, he's on the updated Stormtrooper body, which they released... I believe four months ago or so with the Empire Strikes Back wave they redid the Stormtrooper from the original previously all the Stormtrooper variants were based on the same Stormtrooper body from the very first wave of the Black Series from 2014 2013 so he's got a lot of new stuff and he's got a lot of um, weird little things about him that I've seen online everybody's is different so I want to see what mine looks like that are not totally accurate to the Mandalorian but first, I'd like to shift this review over to Cad Bane, just because I never thought we'd get a figure like him in the Black Series. And I really thought that it was just going to be an event exclusive. Like, when he got announced for HasCon, I felt that was the only way I could get him. And so it's really nice that Hasbro, and I appreciate that, so thanks Hasbro, uh, allowing this to be released as well as, at least where I'm at, the Endor Wave has been released. So that was another exclusive along with the Armorer from The Mandalorian. So all of those were event exclusives, big boxes, a lot more accessories. The event Cad Bane came with his little droid from the Clone Wars. Uh, the armor came with not only her tools, but the actual anvil that she uh, made the Mandalorian's armor on. And I think that's part of that armor, or some Beskar plates. And then, of course, the Ewok on a scout bike, or speeder bike, is just an event exclusive, but that set also came with Han, Luke, and Leia. All of those are being sold in this wave as single figures. So thank you Hasbro for doing that. I know a lot of people, especially myself, find it hard to get some exclusive, especially after they sell out, and then that's kind of it for a while. It's pretty cool to see that I have Cad Bane in hand, even without that. So without further ado, let's get to Cad Bane first. And if you want to, you can pause the video now and just read a little bit about him but these are also the first figures where i have the new packaging so i haven't seen it in person yet it looks pretty cool this is new this is more of like the marvel legends look so previously it, this would just be black with their name maybe a silhouette of them but they angle it off they give you a larger picture and i don't have any from cad bane's way but as some people have been doing online they will make a flat picture going that way of all the characters in that wave. So I don't have any of the others, but do like the new packaging. I also like the new packaging on the inside. So let me get mine open. Just a lot easier to card or to take out and then put them back in their card. Nice plastic sheet over top. Take that out just like the Hot Toys figures. And then there's a figure inside. Now he probably won't get recarded just because it's a little hard to get his coat out of the way. Let's see if I can get him out of here without packaging too much. Cool. All right. So I suspected that his hat was a single piece, and same with this. But I wasn't sure. So pretty cool so far. Love his head. Looking good. Let me get the rest of him out of the package, if I can get him to stand. The cool thing about Cad Bane is, as far as I know, 
he is all 100% new sculpt. I don't know what else they're going to plan on doing with his uh, body or his head sculpt afterwards, but I would love to see more 6-inch Enduros. Shriv from Battlefront 2 would be a nice touch. Here's his hat. Some paint applications in the front. Nothing in the back, mostly just molded in plastic. And then silver on either side, which is nice. God, he is hard to stand up. I am not having any luck with my figures in any of these reviews, getting them to stand on their own. So on the shelf, I don't know how he'll do, but that'll do for now. And then along with everything else being brand new sculpt, I'm pretty sure that his blaster pistols, which are accurate to the Clone Wars, one nice chrome, black barrel, some wood paint apps there, nice and breaking it up compared to the standard blasters that we see from Hasbro. But these are also all new sculpt and very shiny. So we get two of those. Alrighty, so to get to articulation, well, first let me look at this figure. Uh, bandoliers here. This is a separate piece, which is nice. I don't know if that means you can take his whole jacket off. Obviously from the front, all the way down is one piece. It's not so obvious to me is that usually they just have the jacket molded into the sleeves. But in this case, it is quite an interesting thicker part that's molded over where it's a much softer plastic here. And then the arms underneath it to kind of enhance that 3D effect that he's wearing a jacket, which I'm a big fan of. Mine has incredibly nice paint apps. So everything's real clean. His rebreather on the back is not attached to the jacket. So you could take his head off and use it somewhere else. Or alternatively, take the jacket off and use that somewhere else if you wanted to. Nice boosters on his legs. Boots have some cool detail. They're not painted. Uh, I might paint mine, but not right now. Pant sculpt is neat. And I say neat just because I don't really know what... His pants are designed like this in the Clone Wars, but I don't really know what kind of pants would look like that. But I think it's cool if they added it. Then, of course, all the wires from his gauntlets go straight up into this newer, thicker arm piece. So they don't look like they're going to pop out, and they are pretty flexible. Two trigger finger hands to hold his blasters, which... Try that now. Holds it pretty good. And then they should be able to fit. And their holster is pretty nice. Oh, wow. Okay. It's really nice. Paint apps on the holster, not there, but they do have detail for metal if you wanted to add it. But they kind of snap into place. So he is perhaps the coolest space cowboy we get in the Star Wars universe. That's just my opinion. Uh, vicious Duros, if you're fans of the show like I am. Only thing I am noticing is that, at least when moving around with the gun, the paint apps on his fingers... Or maybe from the guns do rub off, because now I got a little bit of silver on that hand. Other than that, pretty solid. So, basic articulation. Looks up, ooh, just the head. Has ball joint, double ball, well, a dumbbell joint up in the head, at the neck, and then another ball joint in the neck. So you can look down about that far. Look up pretty far. Side to side is not inhibited by anything, because like I said, this is all attached to one piece, so you could 360 all the way around. With that there. Hopefully it doesn't pop out too easy, but we'll see. Because the jacket is separate pieces, arms go all the way up, well past the T position, all the way down. They do 360 all the way around. As you just saw with the hoses, or even with the hoses, full 90 degree bend at the elbow, and then the wrist swivel up and down on either side, and then rotate. It is the same pair of joints and the wrist on his right arm, and it has the same articulation. The only thing I'm worried about is this jacket maybe impeding going backwards. He can't really move all the way back with it on. And the joints are incredibly stiff in his leg on mine, so I don't want to break them. But it is a double jointed knee. Goes back okay, not great. Cannot reach all the way back. Super hard for me to move him forward. Swivel here, swivel up here, 
and then at the hip, and then you go up and back about that far. No rockers to the inside, but they do rock at an angle outside. So you can get some pretty dynamic poses. Oh, this one goes inside. This one goes all the way, I don't know. Oh, they both do. Okay, I was wrong. So you get some pretty unique poses out of these feet. But articulation's pretty good so far. This belt, I just realized that. So the belt with the holsters and everything is a separate piece. Then this belt up here on him, I believe is sculpted in, yep. It doesn't have crunch all the way. It's got a separated chest so you can move side to side like that. The applica paint applications on him are really nice. The chrome. So looks... my recording got interrupted, but it gave me enough time to set him up in a pretty cool pose, which I think basically finishes off my articulation. I mean, he does some amazing poses. But final thoughts on this figure, and I got some time to look at like the gauntlets have nice paint out. Everything on this figure, especially on the face around the edges where you can see the metal there, it's all very clean. I might put a wash in his face just to bring out some of those details, but everything else, the dry brushing on the chest, like I said, the silver, like the normal silver paint ups they use, they're very bright. They're like an acrylic chrome paint, which um basically is just a nice bright silver. But the stuff on his rounds and his guns is like a true chrome lacquer, like what I use on my other channel to do natural metal aircraft. I mean, for one of the most interesting and instantly beloved cult characters, and here he is, that is how you can see his face, I think this is above and beyond as a tribute to him in Black Series likeness. So far, this is my first brand, brand new. So like new packaging, new design. Of course, he's a completely new figure and sculpt altogether of the Black Series. But if this is any indication of where the Black Series is headed, and I'll find out right now with the Mandalorian Incinerator, things are looking very, very good for six inch figure collecting, at least for Star Wars. Absolutely, final thoughts. Absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10. Paint apps, amazing. Color application, great. Sculpt, great. Super unique, super interesting way to maintain articulation. Everything is show accurate. For anybody that was a fan of the Clone Wars, even if you weren't like a big, big fan of Cad Bane, like I always liked Cad, but I wasn't like crazy big fan of him. He's my favorite bounty hunter next to like Jango Fett. But, uh, oh my god, I could not be more happy with this figure. For anybody who did get the actual convention exclusive, let me know if there's any little bits and pieces that are different, anything that you find unique, or if the robot adds his droid, sorry, add something to it. But for me, already done deal. Just an amazing figure. So now I'll move on to the incinerator. And same thing like with Cab. You can pause that there if you want to read a little bit more about him. Uh, this kind of changes a little bit from the Legends. So they were a Legends Trooper before they were in the Mandalorian. I'm just happy to have them back in canon. Uh, but it's kind of the same. Just basically pyrotechnic guys. Arsonist, really. That was the whole thing. But I'm eager to see how mine looks and how the new Stormtrooper body looks. Also, that's nice. So we did uncard a figure, something happened. These cards now will fit over any of the standard packaging, and you just have to worry about the back blister. That's fun. Just because they added that second stage. One, love the fame effect. It's a little bit bigger and a little bit crazier than the one given to the six-inch trooper, but still pretty cool. Very soft plastic. But uh, we'll see how it works. Or not the six-inch, the six inch trooper. And I can already tell you that yes, Mine has the same perk because it's from that initial run, the very first run. So, one, most guys came with theirs with a lopsided head. There's a way to fix that. I'm not going to do it on this video, but you're going to have to pop the ball joint out uh, and just kind of round that out. But mine also has a lopsided head. Uh, but this backpack is, in fact, upside down. So these and all should be on top and these should be pulling over. So you're gonna have to do some kind of finagling to get that around. There's like two pegs on his shoulder. It just comes right off. And only problem is it is connected, unfortunately, to his pauldron. So that is the hard part about moving this figure around. 
There's just another peg there, and the whole thing basically comes off. I hope I did not break mine just now. But, yeah, basically those three pegs right there, one here, two up here, pack comes off, should be flipped around this way. Now my only problem is how I get it to stay like that. I don't know yet, but I will figure it out. As far as articulation, you already saw some of it. Yeah, I had it wrong, by the way. I was trying to remember, and I had a chance to look it up in between takes. The old one, the shoulder blades are attached to the arm. Here, they are right underneath that, and he has, looks like a butterfly joint, but it's, yeah, a butterfly joint in there now. So you can go and get way more articulation that way compared to the old one. Double jointed elbows gives you perfect 90. They do rotate all the way around, sort of, but you gotta move the armor out of the way, which I'm not gonna do on mine because I'm afraid of it tearing. So for the purpose of my review, they don't rotate 360, but you could probably get him to do it. Just like normal, left hand goes side to side, whereas the right hand up and down. Paint apps on the stripes, very nice. I'm gonna weather mine with paint, but I'll be doing that on my other channel, which is where I do all my painting work, because he's a little bright and clean right now. Ab crunch. Very hard. So this is pretty much the same. Huge dumbbell joint all the way through the body. Um, looks like it's just a double dumbbell in the head. 360 swivel. It's got to round that head out. Very flat. And uh, double knees. Cannot go all the way back. Got to rotate the armor to bring it all the way front. And then, of course, side-to-side -side rockers in the ankles. So compared... For the original Stormtrooper, he has, I would say, a great deal more articulation. It is a little bit nicer. The only thing I don't like about him is the switch to the softer helmet plastic compared to this bad boy. So there's the original guy. They stand about the same height. Actually, he's a little bit shorter, and his helmet's a little bit smaller. But, like I said, these... Shoulder pads are attached to the arm, so getting up was a problem, but rotating all the way around was not. No butterfly joint, so it did prevent some articulation on the original, but for a figure that's seven years old now, almost, he is still the best. He's the first six-inch figure that I've ever owned. So love him, but this new body, in my opinion, is really, really good. So, like I said, I don't know how I'm going to fix the backpack. I'm going to also do that on my other channel. But for now, let's see how we can get this to um, actually attach. Ah! So you got to push these out of the way. They're kind of soft. And then, man, that's a lot of flame. Paint apps on the gun are okay. Standard fare. Basically just black and then some gunmetal stuff. They do have the Imperial Insignia, just like on the Hot Toys one, which is nice. And he holds it right, very tightly. But it has the same problem as the Hot Toys one or as any of the very long blaster weapons or any weapons like this, which is it's just heavy. So his hand is just another trigger hand. It's a standard Stormtrooper hand. Oh, wow. Hold up. So I don't know if I could show you this. I don't know if my camera's going to pick up on it, but there is some really nice cross-stitching detail on the gloves. It's the same texture as the straps on his um, straps. So that's new. So these are all new hands because these are just normal hands here. And I'll put these pictures on Instagram so you can see it side by side, make your own judgment, but that's really cool. And his body glove has actual, it's like the clones now, they have the body glove detail there. But uh, the Hot Toys one is able to do, obviously, because it's Hot Toys, like this position here or underneath. Um, for the purpose of the Black Series, I think you're only going to be able to get them to do this. But that butterfly joint allows you to do it pretty well. Again, just like Cad Bane, the joints on mine are a little bit rough. But nothing too crazy. And I... That weapon is super heavy. Also, this is hope that this is pulling it down. So, probably just stick this on for now, upside down, just to keep balance to the figure. We're supposed to bring balance to the figure, not destroy it, or leave it in dark. Whatever, whatever. Like, 
Bad joke. But uh, really weird knee joint here that does this. Just like the Cad Bane knees, it's a swivel now in there, which is new. Allows for way more dynamic posing. If the figure can bear it, obviously this Stormtrooper cannot. But that's not because of the Stormtrooper body. I'm sure if he just had a normal... Oh, he can do it. It's all about balance. But if he had a normal blaster, it would be a lot easier to do. This is just very heavy in proportion. But yeah, real quick review on him. I was mostly enamored by Cad Bane. I did not know how cool Cad Bane was going to be. But this guy is really cool as well. I just got to fix the head and then put the backpack over. But otherwise, a great figure. Obviously, this is a little bit different than Cad Bane. Uh, new joints, new design. So it's real cool. Let me show you what he looks like next to the Hot Toys one. But for me, I would only get him if you're like a fan of the Mandalorian. And, you know, you could say that for Cad Bane only if you're a fan of the Clone Wars. But I disagree. Like, even if you wanted a Duro's head or to do some customizing using any of these parts like I was talking about, Cad Bane is a 10 out of 10, just amazing figure, must have. If you're a fan of the original trilogy and the Mandalorian like I am, he's a must as well. But as cool as the new body is, you're going to see it on all the new Stormtroopers and all the new Clone Troopers. So I don't think it's completely necessary. Plus, some of the other ones might have a better sculpted head. But I think he's going to be truly unique. And I can't wait to see what kind of figure span that pulls out of this body. Which is absolutely amazing. And then, here he is. Half the size... Oh, well, you can't really see him because he's so far away, but there he is. Little incinerator trooper next to the big incinerator trooper. Flame on, guys. But yeah, thank you for watching. As always, appreciate the support. Let me know down in the comments anything you've noticed about the new lines, or if you have new up figures, what you think about them, or just some other creative ways on fixing the incinerator trooper head, or if you like Cad Bane, just anything. We'll have to get in touch with you guys on this kind of stuff. I'd love to talk to you about it here in the comments. But I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.